not only to my children, but to anybody. Our lives rush past. We've become fixated on digital equipment that's robbing us of time. Uh, people say to me they've no time. They've loads of time. If you want to know how much time you've got, just ask yourself a simple question. How much time have I spent in the last week fiddling with a piece of digital equipment and doing things that have no relevance whatsoever to my profession or my life? And then say, have I got any time? We're robbing ourselves of the most important thing in life if we're Christians, and that is seeking fellowship with God through his word. You will never make any impact on this world by reading the Bible for five minutes before you jump into bed. And I'm brutally practical. You husbands will never make any impact on the world if you're not praying with your wives and leading your families spiritually. You just won't. It's not possible to develop a deep relationship within a family that is not triangular. That is, it doesn't include Jesus Christ at one corner. And we can seek to repent of these things and really begin to make time so that, in that sense, we get to know God. I used to think that science and all of these arguments were much more interesting than the Bible. And I discussed it with my mentor, David Gooding, and he said, would you like to do a Bible study? And he invited me to do one. One night transformed my life, completely in Cambridge, where I, for the very first time, I met a person that took Scripture seriously and just stood with it. We put it up in reversed wallpaper, pinned up to a wall, and he entered a, a dialogue with Matthew. And it was just mind-blowing how he began to open the treasures of Scripture. But it takes input and work. Many of you people are professional. Think of the work you had to do to get to where you are. Now, if God has given you that kind of mind, how much of it are you using on him? And what worries me silly is people who rise in their professional career like that, but their knowledge of Scripture remains on a basic baby Sunday school level. So the moment their peers raise any questions, they instantly detect they've not thought it through. And that silences them, often forever, sadly. So it's, it's a clarion call, and I very much admire what Joel and his colleagues are doing. And I think it is a way of pushing against this tide of mediocrity, where we don't take God's word seriously. So what that tells me, when I find it in my own heart, is I don't really love God. All this talk about going to heaven and going to meet with Christ, if that happened to you now, what would you say to him? What would you talk about? It is very serious stuff. C.S. Lewis says all the leaves of the New Testament rustle with an expectation of eternity. And if we've never sensed that, the word of God is given to us to make eternal things real. And we need to spend time immersed in it, prayerfully reading it with other people and alone.